poll watching or voter intimidation. President Trump told his supporters to, quote, go into the polls and watch very carefully. And the RNC has recruited thousands of poll watchers. But Democrats say they are encouraging voter intimidation. So which is it? NBC News national political reporter Josh Letterman shows us what's legal. It's every county clerk's worst nightmare. Thousands of vigilantes showing up without warning on Election Day. Not to vote, but to watch, some of them armed, demanding that some people's ballots be thrown out. A tense situation in which some might not feel safe to vote. Poll watching, also known as observing elections, is legal in America. Intimidating voters is not. But comments like these raise fears the line could be crossed. I'm urging first. my supporters to go into the polls and watch very carefully because that's what has to happen. I am urging them to do it. Both Democrats and Republicans have long assigned poll watchers who make sure their party has a fair chance of winning. There are nonpartisan election monitors and then there are party poll watchers. All of them are there to ensure that the process goes smoothly and according to the law and fairly. The nonpartisan ones are sent by good governance groups to be the public's eyes and ears. Increasing confidence the election is fair. Nina Jankowicz has been an election monitor throughout Europe. In Russia, I was up until 4 or 5 in the morning watching ballots getting counted at a regional office. Poll watchers enlisted by political parties play a different role. They ensure their party's voters aren't denied the right to cast ballots. They may also challenge whether procedures are being violated, like ID requirements, or whether certain voters are eligible. But where does legitimate poll watching end and voter intimidation start? I asked Nevada's Attorney General Aaron Ford. After Trump's debate comments, Ford was so concerned about voter suppression, he put out a warning. Where it's a felony to use or threaten to use any force, uh, intimidation, coercion, uh, any violence or any restraint uh, uh, or, or undue influence against people who are trying to exercise their constitutional right to vote. If it happens to you, inform a poll worker, your state elections board, or the police. Uh, and again, it's a felony in our state to do so. I will prosecute those, rest assured. The laws on poll watching vary from state to state, but there are some basic do's and don'ts. The biggest, don't interfere with voting. If you see a problem, raise it only with the election officials. In 40 states in the District of Columbia, you must be formally accredited in advance. You can't just show up. What is the actual process you have to go through if you want to follow the rules and be a, a poll watcher? Uh, they have to uh, uh, fill out a form that's going to attest to a few things. The first thing they have to attest to is that they won't even talk to voters in the polling place, uh, let alone intimidate them. Uh, they can't use any mobile telephone device, devices or anything like that in the, in the polling place. They can't advocate for or against a candidate, a political party, or any ballot question while they're in the polling location. Uh, they can't argue for or against or challenge any decision uh, of the county or the city election personnel. Um, they can't interfere with the conduct of voting. It's been a problem in the past. In the 80s, the Republican National Committee started a group called the National Ballot Security Task Force. They sent off-duty police officers with armbands to patrol voting places in minority neighborhoods in New Jersey. It had the impact of disenfranchising countless numbers of voters, um, but particularly uh, Black and Hispanic voters, which is where these um, individuals were targeting. Democrats sued under the Voting Rights Act, and the RNC agreed not to do it again. But in 2017, that agreement expired, raising fears the same tactics could be used this year. President Trump has talked about sending law enforcement to the polls, and his campaign has called for an army of Trump to poll watch on Election Day. We need every able-bodied man, woman, to join Army for Trump's election security operation. Trump's campaign and the RNC say they're seeking about 50,000 volunteers. We all know that the Democrats will be up to their old dirty tricks on Election Day to make sure that President Trump doesn't win. Study after study has shown there's no widespread voter fraud in the U.S. by either party. But the militaristic tone being used by Trump's campaign is raising concerns about Election Day. Are the laws the same across the country in terms of whether you can actually bring a gun to a polling place? No, unfortunately, they're not. There are only six states that broadly prohibit guns at the polls. There are uh, four additional states that prohibit concealed carry at the polls, but not open carry. And there are a handful of other states that prohibit open carry at the polls. If you do go to vote and a poll watcher challenges your ballot, remember, you have options. 
In almost every state, you can file a provisional ballot until things get sorted out. A backstop to make sure every eligible vote gets counted. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.